Well, happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a uh, weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as an entrepreneur and a craftsman to answer any of your questions. Now, for homeowners, uh, anything you've ever wanted to know about painting, this is the place for you. Uh, for uh, other paint business entrepreneurs, we can talk marketing, apprenticeship, uh, coding science, uh, you know, any of the business parts of it here. So, uh, Christian, thank you for watching. Uh, Hal Palmera, Mike McGrath, as usual. I just met Mike McGrath in person here. A little bit ago uh, Jason as well so uh, a couple special things are gonna happen here uh, in a couple weeks I have a Northeast four state tour where I'm taking my master's classes and I'm bringing them to four states on the Northeast coast here uh, Christine O'Connell is gonna be joining us here from the PDCA and we out the Northeast tour and filling in some information so I'll actually bring in some uh, info here if you guys want any information about the Northeast tour go to the PDCA's uh, main page here and right on the front meet Nick Slavic on his Northeast tour learn more bam everything you've ever wanted to know uh, we have locations we have times we have dates uh, we have uh, information on my master's classes and how to sign up for them uh, so yeah this will be uh, yeah this will be really awesome uh, Christine uh, is going to join us here in just a second so Mike McGrath who I just met uh, will be in Vermont so hey guys how's it going good, good. how are you Good, good. So give me one second here. I'm testing out a new wireless mic. I might have to switch some things around so I can hear you guys, okay? All right. Okay. All right, I can hear you. Hey, what's up? How's it going, what's guys? <laughs> We're fitting in the screen here. Yeah. I love it. How you doing? Dude, the shirts are awesome. Yeah, we got some new gear. Oh, my, nice. And they even yeah. make Chris look good. I know, you know, they're magic, uh, magical right here. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So um, we are going to talk about the, the Northeast tour. Uh, but first off, what's what's new at the PDCA? What's exciting for you guys? It seems like all the fun stuff is happening with you guys. Always, yes. always. Well, the new gear we've yep. got going on, that's exciting. And we're mainly excited about this event that's coming up, your Northeast tour. Oh, that's, that's, I'm so excited. It's taken a while to put together. There's tons of moving parts, but uh, I just showed people uh, on the, uh, on your guys' homepage. This is amazing. You guys put me on your homepage. That's so cool. Yeah. We're proud of you, Nick. <laughs> we are. Our well, shining star. I'm, I'm happy that you guys will have me. So, um, so basically if people go on to the uh, PDCA uh, homepage there, click through, all the information is there for them. Uh, so basically, um, on October 8th, I'll be flying into the Northeast October 7th. Uh, we start master's classes October 8th at Catchlight Painting, which is, I actually know the owner of Catchlight Painting, and you guys are very well acquainted with him. Yeah, Nigel. Nigel. Yeah, Nigel's, he's the chair of the board here at PDCA. Actually, I did a podcast with him recently. We are talking about using high-end paint. So he's involved in education, was an education chair actually uh, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So very involved and was excited. I know he was excited when he saw your presentations at the last, last expo. And he was like, this needs to go on the road. Wow. <laughs> so and this is the first time you've done this, right? Isn't this like, I mean, you've been, you've, you've been sent out to different presentations and stuff, but this is like the first tour, right? <laughs> Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, uh, you and I have coordinated before, you know, a, uh, a council meeting needs something, a national expo, this and that. But yeah, this is sort of like, I've not been involved in something like this. I'll be giving two master's classes a day, one on uh, my most popular one, which is the cabinet and trim finishing one. Uh, and then I'll be doing a new construction one. And as always, it, it's sort of an ask a painter too. So anything anybody ever wants to talk about, which is fun. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so we just want to remind everyone there's only 15 days left to register and seats are filling up. So if you want to register, just pdca.org where Nick just showed you or reach out to Heather Yoakum and we'll get you signed up for that. So Chris, do you want to tell them where all this is taking place? Yeah. So you, have you mentioned where this is all going to be yet? I, I just started in uh, my first stop will be Massachusetts, right? Yep. 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 So, so I got you. Massachusetts. We're going to visit Nigel at uh, Catchlight Painting. He's, he's good enough to have us there in his shop. Uh, then we are going to New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, and we're going to K. Morgan. Yep. Are you, 
It, yeah, right. Okay. And then Vermont, Manchester Center? Yeah, it looks <laughs> like uh, New York is next after Connecticut at Wall Hours. Uh, and then Vermont, last stop on the uh, on the tour over at Lux Brush Painting Company. Yeah, pretty exciting. Great. So we, yeah, the cabinet stuff, I, I saw that. Actually, I saw mm -hmm. both of your presentations. I know they've evolved since. One is you do a great job um, taking in feedback and then kind of just, you know, you, you always incorporate that into new presentations. And then new things come up at every presentation because there are different people there. And so you interact live with people. So I've seen your president and how interactive they are. And I know people should be pretty excited about this. We've heard a lot of good stuff. So really excited about it, Nick. So it, this is interesting. And, and how I take uh, this is, you know, and, and you've, you guys have probably heard me say before I give a master's class, this is not the Bible. This is not the end all and be all. This is not um, the way everybody should do it. But I've, I've approached it as scientifically as possible and actually brought data. So this isn't like, hey, this is how one cool way I did it. I got science, we got molecules, we got diagrams, we got all sorts of good stuff. Uh, all my experiments in my shop. So I have tons of cabinet doors where I've tried to do every horrible thing you could ever do to them. And I present it as here's all the data, here's the best way I've found to do it based on my personality for my clients. And now here's information for you, make up your mind. So I, I, I kind of approach it that way. And like you said, I learn a ton when you gather those people around. This has been an evolving master's class over the years. Yeah, and you know, something to keep in mind is that I know you've done a lot of work and put a lot of science and stuff into that research, but in the end, at the end of the day, you're wrong, Nick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and listen, nobody doubts myself more than me. So, you know, you, there will not be somebody that we meet that is going to uh, put me through more sort of excruciating, uh, you know, microscope sort of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an evolving thing. And I, I readily, if somebody does something better, now it's a part of my system. So... <laughs> All right, and the most important question, are you going to keep the beard? Whoa! <laughs> you can see it's, it's making its way back. <laughs> well, it, uh, it, it, it is deer hunting season here in Minnesota, so I feel like I need to fit in. If I show up to all my friends' house and I have a clean-shaven face, there'll be, a, there'll be a lot of raised eyebrows. So, you know, it'll be, I don't know. We'll, we'll let it go for now. We'll see what my long-suffering wife Toots says about it after a while, because I think she she was just like, "Oh my God, finally!" and now it's back again. So, <laughs> I just wanted to feel it before you grew the beard back, but it's hey, right. hey, you know, you should see if you can't get to the Northeast tour. Maybe we can maybe we can see each other there. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Nick. Hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you for this opportunity. And anybody who wants any information on this stuff, PDCA website or bug these two. They will help you. We will. Awesome. Hey. Thanks again, guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Uh, any questions you guys have here, type them down below. I'm going to go through a few things uh, that uh, we were discussing on social media this past week, but uh, super excited about this Northeast tour. I've done one-offs here and there. I've done national expos. I basically come up with about one or two master's classes a year, and it's basically a way of me using the entire industry as a sounding board because I'm sort of isolated here. In recent years, not so much, but isolated in a way that I've thought about this endlessly. I've tried a lot of things out. Here's the data from my experiments. Now, who can make this better? What am I missing? Am I overlooking something? So it's been, it's been really fun. So Phil Klein, uh, oh, one of the awesomest people on earth. I just got to meet Phil in uh, Denver. We went over to Nick May's Crank. Uh, still working on getting me down to Iowa. I will gladly come down to Iowa. You get a whole bunch of people together, and you're a hop, skip, and a jump from me. So I'm, I'm happy to come down and see you, Phil. So uh, Jason Anke. I laughed this morning when you said it was getting cold there, 97 yesterday, yeah. Uh, we fell off a cliff, so last weekend it was in the 90s, and now it is, I think in the 40s, and it's supposed to be in the 30s tonight, so awesome for deer hunting, uh, horrible for paint, but we got about four or five weeks left here of, of potential weather, and we're hoping to get a bunch of stuff done, so any questions you guys have, type them down below. This is kind of a free-for-all from here on out. Um, I have a few things that I'd like to uh, cover here, but uh, otherwise we are we're gonna plow through this. So Chad LeSueur, neighbor of mine here, 
Oh, Mark Johnston. Uh, Mark, if you're still watching here, I would love to hear you were just doing some uh, lime mortar restoration, a class on it, uh, some tuck pointing, some things like that. I would love to hear how that went for you. So Mike Yachek, thank you for watching. Uh, Jeremiah, thank you for watching. Jade, Jade, another uh, Minnesota contractor here. Uh, also, Gathering of Minnesota Painters is coming up uh, probably in a couple weeks here, give or take. I think, uh, I think we're on the short thing here. Jason and I have been working on a schedule for that, and we're going to we're going to be doing some awesome stuff there. So, based on a poll on our Facebook group, uh, this is a this is a group of people, Minnesota painting contractors. We meet quarterly. Based on the poll uh, of topics, people want to talk about estimating and then uh, off season uh, strategy. So, what what people in Minnesota Minnesota do over the winter? So. Uh, basically, we are putting together uh, some case studies of how different contractors do estimating, and we're going to present it to the whole group. And last time, um, Sherwin was nice enough to sponsor us. They had an awesome layout for lunch. We had their district boardroom, and we, for a couple hours, we had some of the greatest minds in paint business contracting in Minnesota together, and it was awesome. So, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that. And uh, if we have enough time, I'll show everybody how I digitized my business in the last couple months, show you my mobile command unit and how I use all that for estimating. So, all right, Jason, let's see what we got here. What primer do you like when painting over previously painted cabinets? What's your process? Ah, the basis of my cabinet master's class. Uh, a four-hour conversation condensed down into 30 seconds, oil primer. If you can't get oil primer, use hybrid primer. Sherwin, Benjamin Moore, other companies make a hybridized primer, oil water sort of uh, mixture. Uh, if you can't get oil still, uh, cover stain or extreme block primer from Sherwin, use uh, uh, the, the hybrid stuff. Uh, yes, people have used water-based primer uh, and they have got it to work. Uh, people have used bin, uh, everybody likes bin. Uh, the only problem is people don't understand the science behind it and um, how I approach my finishing process is uh, I ask myself a simple question in business and finishing in personal life a lot of the time um, is do we use bin because it's better for us or it's better for the homeowner is it a better finish or does it just dry faster all questions we have to ask ourselves and if and if the answer to those meets our core values and the and the um, and the goal of our company and our finishes then there's your answer. For me, uh, I can sleep at night using oil primer because in 25 years I've never had a callback. Uh, and since I've been using this particular system of fine finishing, uh, I have never received a callback on a cabinet or trim job uh, for chipping, for flaking, for bleeding, for uh, you know failures or things like that. So uh, I really don't mess with something. I mean, I experiment a lot, but I don't mess with things that aren't really broke. So Mike McGrath, awesome Mike McGrath. Mike McGrath has been sending me pictures of the animals he chases through the woods uh, in his room there, the, the heads in the mounds, and awesome. Uh, I, I really envy your, uh, your prowess in the hunting world there. So uh, Mike McGrath, is it better to caulk raw wood before or after priming? Uh, I am of the um, belief that it's better after. Uh, based on, I, I like to bookend my problems, go to the extreme. So as a thought experiment, you go all the way to one end and you go all the way to the other. Uh, and I use exteriors when I think about that stuff. Now, I've done it both ways where you caulk bare wood or you caulk previously finished wood and then enamel over it. And I've not had problems with it. But thought experiment time, you take it out to its farthest extent. We have tons of cedar homes here in Minnesota and on the outside of a house is if you have the choice between caulking bare cedar, you know, where lap boards meet a corner board there, or priming the whole thing and caulking over the primer, I would always choose the primer. Caulk will always stick to primer better. Number one, the moisture doesn't get sucked out of the caulk uh, as it dries there. And number two, a prime surface is a stable surface and caulking will stick to it infinitely better than bare wood. So Mike, inside, honestly, I've not had data to suggest that it really matters, but me and the guys both like uh, patching wood, priming it, and then going back and caulking. Because the caulking won't flash. I got my cat attacking me here too, so. Yeah, I would always go over a prime system there. Oh, Chris Shank, hey, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you guys hopping on here. And you guys have been champions and advocates of mine uh, since we first met. And uh, it's just awesome. You guys truly have the industry's best, um, you know, best, best forward looking, uh, you know, sort of, um, ideas in your head and and you guys are good champions of the trade so Mike McGrath oh and again random question show so anything you guys want to talk about type it down below there uh, Mike McGrath do you train your guys gals to tape off baseboards before painting or teach them to cut in freehand another easy one Mike always tape uh, and again 
there are <laughs> there are a few controversial things that I didn't know were controversial entering into the paint world. Uh, caulking cabinet doors, which we've been discussing online this week. I actually went to a client's house, beautiful home, 20 year old home, beautiful satin and pervo job. The entire house satin and pervo. They caulked all the cabinet doors. All the cabinet doors were a disaster. Uh, and I took a picture and put it online. Uh, there are a few controversial things that I did not know were controversial. Caulking cabinet doors is one of them. I've since moderated my stance. I used to say absolutely never. Uh, I went to the craftsmanship forum a few years ago and met a bunch of guys from down south, Southern California, Arizona, Texas. They have no problems with this because they have a stable environment. Humidity doesn't fluctuate that much. Temperature doesn't fluctuate that much. Much more stable environment. In Minnesota here, uh, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. We just had a week of rain. We had tornadoes. We had this and that. The week previous was dry as a bone. This week, the air feels thick. It's like hard to breathe. It's so moist here. So uh, one of the other things that's fairly controversial uh, is taping. I thought, uh, based on my practices, uh, I am a taper. I didn't know that was controversial. Uh, and again, you have to ask yourself, um, you have to ask yourself a series of questions. By not taping the woodwork, is it better for you or for better for the homeowner? Um, by freehanding woodwork, is it better for you or better for the homeowner? And I've done experiments. Uh, I know that people can't, um, yes, there are one-offs. I shouldn't say absolute, but if you take 100 painters, the majority of them, the vast majority of them, will not be able to do as good of a job as if you tape the woodwork. And then speed comes into it. Of those 100 painters, the majority of them would not be able to go quicker than if you just spend, I think it takes eight to 11 minutes to tape a standard small bedroom. I don't think you can shave, save that eight minutes by not taping, save that 11 minutes by not taping. The extra time it takes you to cut in, I'm not sure if you're saving time. And even if it does, even if you can go just as fast, are you doing as good a job? That's what I question. And uh, all the data that I've done points to taping. So super controversial, I know, but I wonder all the time if people don't like to tape because they don't want to buy tape or because they feel it's better for the client. Uh, and uh, another part of that is even if you can, even let's say hypothetically, if you don't tape, you're saving money on tape, you can cut faster and you get a better line. All hypothetical, which I've not seen borne out in the field. What about the splatter on the bottom baseboard uh, when you roll? To me alone, that's, that's probably worth it. So Mike, uh, you know the answer to that. I'm sure you do something similar to me. So, uh, Jason, thanks. I knew uh, you use those two overgoing stain cabinets, but don't know if you're to go to for painted as well. Oh, absolutely. Now, it depends. If we don't have a lot of currently painted trim. In Minnesota, the last housing boom took place 10 years ago, give or take. Everything was golden oak and pecan colored. So we have a plethora of that stuff out here. Of the homes that we've started enameling five to eight years ago like that, not a lot of them need redo. Now on the coast and different areas of the country, you know, if you go down into Florida, there's almost no stained and varnished woodwork. Everything is MDF, HDF, poplar painted, things like that. We don't do a lot of repainting stuff. The repainting we do is in old homes. If there's any question, uh, a friend of mine actually came up with an awesome product to test whether you have oil or latex. It's a little swab uh, and you just, uh, you swab it and it tells you, you know, oil or latex. And based on the hybrid finishes, uh, sometimes you have to prime, sometimes you don't. I always do uh, adhesion tests, put it on there. So uh, clean swipe, I believe it's called. And uh, uh, the little swab you do, it's super awesome. Uh, but other than that, uh, we don't do a lot of, we're doing a lot of new stuff. But uh, even when uh, construction mill packs come pre-primed pre and they put them in the house, I still patch and uh, caulk and all that stuff and then prime over it again, then sand it all down. It just gives it a nice stable substrate uh, and it just kind of eliminates variables in the finish. So thanks, Jason. Uh, Mike McGrath, the King's Room. Yeah, that's right. I love that. I love that. And we, Mike McGrath, I learned something cool about Mike McGrath. He has a food plot like mine now. He has a very sophisticated food plot. And a food plot, for those of you who, who aren't into this, uh, you take a section of your land and you plant something specifically for animals to eat. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of deer love the hostas and the vegetable gardens. Well, this is when you plant that you don't get angry that they eat. And Mike's got uh, beets, which which I believe they love, and some ryegrass. I have three and a half acres of corn, so I just put in field corn, and it's sitting there. And I have uh, paths through it for the deer to walk through, to kind of funnel them through my property efficiently, keep them off the roads and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's been good. So, 
Oh, Ian, here we go. I met Ian over at uh, Denver this last weekend, too. Ian's an awesome young contractor. He's super progressive. I love to see what he's doing here. So, Mike McGrath, always after Prime, never on Raw. Way better adhesion and added bonus, easier to see. Absolutely, Ian. Uh, my guys, if I give them the choice, let's say there's no problem with adhesion or anything else, my guys love priming stuff first and then caulking after. It's just visually, it's much easier. So I absolutely second that. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, Mike McGrath, I'm glad we share the same approach. Absolutely. Oh, Efren. Efren, I would love to see what you're working on. You always got some awesome job sites going. So uh, Parker Johnson. Uh, Parker, uh, awesome, high-flying apprentice of mine in school. Nick May. Good to see you, Nick May. We'll be talking shortly after this. Uh, Luigi. Uh, I might be, am I seeing you uh, during the Northeast tour, Luigi? I, I think you might have mentioned coming out. So, oh, Brian Cumming. Awesome, Brian Cumming. He's over from uh, Benjamin Moore. Awesome guy from Benjamin Moore. We see him at industry events, and uh, my guys took a liking to him a lot. So, uh, da, 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 da. Jose Amuedo, thank you for watching. Any other questions you guys have, type it down below here. Oh, I should mention, uh, we have... We have a, a parade, My Town Festival, going on this weekend. And for those of you who have seen it in the past, uh, you can scroll through my Facebook feed. Last year, we put my old 69 Dodge pickup truck. It's sea mist green. It's cool. It's a swept side thing. Uh, I rode with my youngest daughter in there. We had all my apprentices, their families, their friends, everybody else. And we handed out like four or five hundred pounds of Reese's peanut butter cups. You should have seen, you know, because people, people get... Uh, People get burned out on parade candy here. Like, there's so much candy, and, and a lot of it's not very good. Like, kids, people will dump a bucket of candy in the street, like Tootsie Rolls and, and Dum Dums and stuff like that, and the kids will just be like, eh, you know, wait for chocolate. When people see that we're throwing out Reese's peanut butter cups out there, like, adults six rows back will stand up, and they'll be pushing kids out of the way to try to get to them. So it's my little way of thanking my own town, like, I love this here. I was born and raised here. These people have trusted me with their homes. I split off from my own family business 11 years ago, and they still trusted me in their homes, and it's been awesome. My family is here. I'm not leaving. Uh, the schools are awesome, and I'm not going anywhere. So this is my place, and I want to make sure that everybody knows how much I appreciate this, uh, this town and the people. Ah, Luigi. So you must have a contract with 3M or either Blue Painter's Tape. <laughs> He also uses tape. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, I do have patrons, but I certainly don't get the stuff for free. Uh, <laughs> you guys should see, uh, evidently I was spending so much money in frog tape, uh, their rep called me and was like, hey man, I see you on the radar here, we should get together. So if that's any proof, know that, uh, you know, just because I'm a loudmouth on social media, I still have Sherwin-Williams, Ace Hardware, Benjamin Moore, PPG bills to pay at the end of the month too. So Ernesto, good to see you. Stefan Trepke. Thanks for watching. Oh, Sandy Gallagher, uh, my uh, music and choir teacher back when I was in school there. I'm glad to see you watching there too. Uh, Mike McGrath, it took very little work. I assume to the hunting. Yeah, the hunting, if you're, yeah, this hunting thing, man, I'm new to hunting, but uh, it's kind of funny. It's a good thing it's enjoyable because if you, if you took the amount of time and the amount of money you spent on gathering the pounds of meat, the pound per meat would be the most expensive meat on the planet <laughs> like the rarest stuff so aaron shaver apprentice of mine must be having lunch break right now uh mike mcgrath ian's a solid dude i would agree uh any other questions guys type them down below we're kind of going through here i agree with taping if five dollars worth of tape messes up your profit margin you might want to rethink your pricing yeah and as painters when we get in groups of painters like when i go give my master's classes or or i get around a bunch of people a lot of times all the discussion goes to is what do you pay for this paint? Do you tape? What do you pay for the tape? And it's good to keep an eye on that stuff. Uh, when you're using tons and tons and tons of it, uh, it's good to work on that to help your margin, but you will not become a profitable company from an unprofitable company based on taping or not taping or saving $2 a gallon on cover stain primer. So it's good. It's good to watch that stuff, but people should be spending, you know, in the in the game of where's the low hanging fruit, where's the biggest thing you can move to change your business? It's labor. Uh, the industry standard for materials is, uh, you know, once you pass a certain point, you know, one or two or three man companies, I think the the ratios will be off. But once you get past that, 
basically 15% of all the money you spend in the year should be on materials. So that's paint and sundries. So really, you know, when labor is 40 to 45, give or take. So if you want to work on something in your business, work on the labor and, and not the materials. That's where I find the big stuff. So, uh, Luigi, my go-to is frog tape green. I agree. Interesting story about frog tape is, uh, it was, uh, created by this little invention company about 30 minutes away south of me um, down in Lee Sewer. Uh, they were just a little like consumer product thing. They came up with it and uh, they decided, uh, you know, I think they ended up uh, licensing or selling to Sure Tape, but uh, they brought some test products around to my local hardware store years ago. This is probably, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. And they're like, hey, just give this out to contractors. And I was one of the only contractors coming through my store. And they gave it to me and I used it. I was like, oh my God, this stuff is amazing. So I called the company and I was like, listen, whatever I can do to help you guys, this is awesome. Let's get this going. And they basically said, yeah, do some more tests for us and hang out. And I got to go down there and visit them in the early stages. And I just love the, the business process, the invention process, all that stuff. And uh, I was so happy to get a product that changes the way I do business that, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, it was a really cool story. So I'm uh, a soft spot in my heart for, for frog tape, is what I'm saying. So uh, Jeffrey Latendre, thank you for watching. Victoria Svoboda, thank you for watching. Okay, uh, Luigi, quick question. On old six panel windows, would you use tape, spray mask, or paint and, and clean with a blade? Okay, so cat's attacking me again. Go on. So, uh, when we, when we balance efficiency and quality and all this stuff, uh, I always use tape. Um, with enough experience, you can mask off stuff so quick. Uh, the only problem with liquid mask and the like is I see a lot of people going over bare windows, bare wood, uh, with a clear, gummy stuff. You basically spray it all over the windows and then you cut it out at the end and take it off. My only problem with that is the same reasons why I don't use a lot of like, um, uh, peel bond primers and stuff like that. I have used them in the past. Uh, while there is alternatives, I don't feel they're necessarily the best thing for a lot of the jobs. Now, in theory, let's say you have a uh, an old historic window or, or a new pine window uh, that's got a lot of bare wood on it, and you have a choice to either let the first thing that touches it be an oil primer or even a, a super high quality water-based primer, hard drying, uh, penetrating primer, uh, long oil, something like that, or this clear rubbery liquid um, that you spray on top. Now, for me, if this was my house, uh, I would always choose the oil primer, uh, mainly because anything water, well, not anything, most water-based primers will still allow some bleeding through on certain things, and certainly the non-pigmented ones. So if you were to take like, you know, XIM, Peel Bond, or, you know, everybody makes one, that stuff does not stop bleeding. It is a water-based primer, even some of the pigmented ones will leach the tannins out of the wood. And then you have to ask, what about the adhesion part? A long oil primer, which penetrates the, the upper layer of the surface of the wood versus a, a clear watery, rubbery sort of thing. I know it's a good product. I know people use it well. As long as I have a choice to use oil primer, that's what I feel comfortable with because I've just not had big failures with it. Uh, what I'd be worried about is that you put this rubbery layer of stuff over bare wood uh, and then there's adhesion problems, there's bleeding problems, it's rubbery but yet your top coat is a little bit harder and, and it's a whole bunch of like, you're, I really like consistent systems. I love the idea of a primer and two top coats. Now what that primer is and what that top coat is, is a whole thing you know based on substrate but I love that idea. Same reason why I'm sort of puzzled by I love bin, it's awesome, but I have to prime three times and then I do two top coats. But if you're using bin and it's so good, why can't you just prime it once? With oil primer, you prime it once and you do two top coats. And so it's one of those things where I think people get down this rabbit hole of this stuff and they're, you have to do first principle reasoning, which is basically take a step back from the problem, stop, stop with the assumptions. All your assumptions, you need to question them. You say, okay, here's this thing that we spray on and then we can cut out. now. Does it stick as good as oil primer? Does it stop bleeding as good as oil primer? Um, does it save you time? And of those three things, then you have to ask yourself, why do we use this product? Why is this product interesting to me? Is it because I can look at the client and say, I'm giving you a better product. Nothing sticks better, nothing will stop bleeding better, nothing will give you a longer top coat, or are we using it because it's going to cut some of our time out? 
Now, in a perfect world, I don't believe it's uh, so uh, binary like that. I believe there are some perfect situations where you can have both. It can be super good for the client. It can also be super good for you. You just have to do your research on it. So hope that helps, Luigi. Kanan, another one of my apprentices watching. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Austin Smith. Kanan was my one who just hit his year mark. We got him a pair of boots. And we, uh, we got him his polo shirts now with his name embroidered on it. So that's, it's awesome to see his growth in the company. He was running his own cabinet cruise after only a couple months of work, and he's doing phenomenal. So Mike McGrath, do you use frog tape or blue tape on baseboards? Frog tape. Anywhere where we tape baseboards, I use, excuse me, frog tape. Oh, Chad Merriam. Love Chad. He's another local contractor. Him and I are getting together for a cup of coffee next Monday. Uh, Jason. I think frog tape is better than blue on baseboard. Uh, every year I do an experiment uh, with blue tape and then with frog tape. And I don't know, uh, I try to simplify my company. So for people who have seen, um, I gave a short presentation in Denver. Uh, on, on the spot, somebody asked me like, so what do you, like what are the basic things that you would, they've seen my tote system and my vans and I don't carry a lot of stuff, but yet we can do everything with it. And I quick went through my PowerPoint presentation that I show all my crews about the basic load, you know, your basic gear, your basic kit. And uh, I like to basically have two kinds of tape. We have one inch frog tape, we have inch and a half blue. So versatile. Now, up for debate, you can use a whole bunch of other stuff in there, but for me, I love simplicity. I love having two tapes, two brushes, one roller cover, only a couple hand tools, and it's just like a switchblade knife. It does everything. So that's sort of what I what I think. Uh, Elias, got to meet Elias as well. Love him. We had some great conversations about business, and he's killing it out there. So, yeah. Oh, Carrie, my cat is demanding. Yeah, uh, nobody pays any attention to her. So, yeah, here we are. Uh, Lisa, Lisa Strong. Oh, yeah, I met Lisa as well out there. Uh, had an awesome conversation with Lisa over in Denver, over at Crank, too. So, Parker, young apprentice Parker, who's... Uh, Who's a, who's a fellow army man like myself. What is the one product that every painter or craftsman should know about and have with them at all times? Uh, two answers to that. What everybody should know about is primers. You should basically delve into the science of primer. If nothing else, learn the difference between oil primer and water-based primer. What the molecules look like. Uh, talk to a paint scientist. The one thing they should have with them at all times, that is a good question. Uh, I would say if if I had to have one super good tool and a whole bunch of other mediocre tools, I would get the best brush I could buy and then I could figure out the rest. Mm, I'm trying to think if there's anything, anything else. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of sort of esoteric things, but honestly, the most good with one tool would be just one good brush and a whole bunch of other crappy, you know, tools if I had to pick one. But yeah, I like, I like that. Uh, and if nothing else, you know, um, PDCA standards, uh, craftsmanship forum standards. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, it couldn't hurt, right? Oh, Connor. Just talked to Connor this morning over Facebook. Uh, we're going to be getting together for the Gathering of Minnesota Painters. Blake Rivaldo, thanks for watching, buddy. I do appreciate it. Let's see who else is at the bottom here. Oh, Mike, got to run. Okay, man, have a good weekend and uh, keep me updated on the hunting stuff. Michael Brennan, uh, thank you guys for watching. Jeff Tuma. Lisa, Diamond Vogel low tack is the best, better than Frog or Blue. Uh, that's something I'm going to have to track down. We don't have a strong Diamond Vogel presence up here, but uh, I would love if, uh, Lisa, if you want to put in a link, I would love to track that down. I got a Diamond Vogel rep calling on me once in a while. Maybe that's something I can track down. I'd love to, I'd love to give it a try. So Chris Barcombe talked as well. So uh, yeah, Andrew Arvidson, another one of my apprentices doing the Lord's work out there in Minnetonka today. Yeah, <laughs> Luigi. Uh, Parker, a five-in-one tool. Yeah, uh, the, the proverbial painter's tool, which is good. So, okay, guys, that's about it. Um, reminder, awesome parade this weekend. Tomorrow at noon, everybody's gathering. We're going to be using scoop shovels to get rid of Reese's for all the people in my hometown. We're going to have families, friends. We're going to have lunch. We're going to have, like, three of our vehicles in the parade. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Let me go through the, fire up this guy again. I'll go through my uh, dates for the Northeast tour here. Be just a second and see if there's anything else on here that I wanted to discuss. I think that's about it. Uh, okay, so uh, starting October 8th, uh, it's going to be four days, four states. I'll be flying in October 7th. The next morning we hit the ground running October 8th at Catch Light Painting in Newton, Massachusetts. Uh, that's Nigel Costello's company. Nigel, awesome guy. 
in charge of the PDCA. Um, great guy, and he's he's nice enough to have me at his shop. Um, October 9th, uh, we're going to K. Morgan Associates in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, October 10th, we're going to Wall Hours in Mohegan Lake, New York. And then October 11th in Vermont at Manchester Center. So if you guys need any information about this, I can give you a link. The PDCA, if you guys are still watching, maybe throw in a link here. Otherwise, go to the PDCA's homepage, Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. There's a link for the tour right in front. You can register there, see all the info. I'll be giving two master's classes a day. Uh, and of course, questions, answers, anything you guys want to talk about. But the big hit one, the cabinet enameling uh, one, uh, down to a science. I mean, the, as much science as I can muster, I put into this thing. And then I believe we're going to be talking about new construction. So the science behind a lot of the coatings there, why I go after it, who I go after, what the builders are like. New construction gets a bad name, and I use it uh, to the benefit of my business. So we can talk about that then too. So, all right. Thanks everybody for watching. It's Friday here. I got to get all my vehicles ready for the parade. We have totes and totes and totes of rubber uh, of uh, um, Reese's over in my garage. We're going to start loading those in there and tomorrow at noon, it's going to be awesome. And there'll probably be a lot of video and pictures involved too. So everybody have a good day and have a good weekend and we'll see you later.